Good evening, CCF Alabang. Welcome to Thirst Date. You know what? We're super glad you can join us for a time of refreshing in the Word. If this is your first time here and you haven't joined us before, a special welcome to you. We would like to get to know you more. So at the comment section right there, there's a little button. Click comment and type in first. Go ahead. F-I-R-S-T. First. And one of our volunteers will get in touch with you and welcome you to our family. And guys, for the rest of us, do reach out to those who type in first and extend the CCF family warm welcome to them. We've been doing a series on the parables of Jesus entitled Uncover. And two Sundays ago, Pastor Peter Tanchi talked about the parable of the sower. And we examined our hearts if it was right for God's kingdom. And then last Sunday, what did we uncover? What was the title of the message? Come on. Feel free to write it down on the comment section. That's right. Be genuine, not fake. Pastor Peter had us continue examining ourselves through several parables if we were genuine or fake Christians and how important it is to surrender our all to Christ. Allow Him to transform us and make Him our highest priority because only His genuine disciples will be able to enter His kingdom. Tonight, Pastor Joby will give us even more insights on this topic. After that, we will flash discussion questions, and this is optional. If you want to join a discussion group to process the message and learn God's Word even more, we will have breakout rooms via Zoom. If you need prayers, our prayer leaders will also be available to pray for and with you. We will flash the Zoom details later after Pastor Joby's devotion. That's it for me. But before we listen to Pastor Joby, let's lift up this time in prayer to our Lord. Our Lord God, Almighty Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that we can not do anything apart from you. Lord, we ask that you use Pastor Joby tonight to make us hear your words. Lord, that you would take every thought captive into obedience to Jesus Christ and that we will give all the glory to you, the God of peace who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant. Equip us in every good thing to do your will, working in us that which is pleasing in your sight. To you be all the glory forever and ever. And the people of God say, Amen and Amen. And now it is my privilege to introduce to you Pastor Joby Soriano. Amen. And good evening, everyone. Brother Ryan, thank you so much for that prayer. And Kyle and the worship team, thank you so much for leading us into worship. A big shout out to the CCF family. Tonight is Thursday. It's our midweek service for Alabang, and I, I greet you all a great welcome this evening. I'm so, so glad that you're here. I want to give a big shout out to so many of you who came early and are here with us right now. There's over uh, 120,000 of you here, or more or less, about that many. Huh? A shout out to Nephew, to Sunny Ayao, to Geraldine Lim, Edwin Landrito, Marian Epilepsia, Selena Santos, Edgar Ignacio, Shout out to Jasmine Camacho, Violi Dionio, to Roli uh, Caballao, to Joseph Choi. Hello to uh, Rock Central. You know where you are. Uh, to Ricardo Isaac, to Jesse Yu, to Zylin Bonza, Edna Escobedo. You know, actually, Zylin is actually watching all the way from Bahrain. Hi, Zylin. And you've got uh, Catherine Rostro, uh, Teresita Alba, Laiko Tatiera. Elisea, Santos, Bon Cornelia, Lani Solis, Marimel Cubet, 
Cubela, wow, Teodora Peleno, Salvador Cayabiab, Teresita Santos, and so many more of you. I'm so, so glad that you're here. And, and this evening as I speak, I want to hear from you. If you have questions, if you have comments, if you have insights, share them in the comment section, okay? Just chat it out. This is interactive. We learn from each other. And your insights and your comments really make this come alive. And so I'm not just here, you know, dealing this one way. It's it's two-way. So as we go along, I want to read your comments and, and see what the insights you have for us tonight, okay? Well, first and foremost, let me first ask you a question. Have you ever bought anything that you thought was real and then ended up fake? Yung nadali kayo? Na dengoy? Na swindle kayo? Has that happened to you? It's happened to me many times. I, I bought something like in a in long, long time ago. I bought a USB in Hong Kong thinking it was real. And they sold it to me for a very cheap price. Yung pala, fake. I lost money. Now the question, have you ever bought anything that was fake knowing it was fake because it was cheap? I know. Ano yung mga binili niyo? Mga bag. Mga, ano pa, mga shirts, mga pants, mga rubber shoes, yung mga alahas, mga pearls, yung ganoon, di ba? How long did it last? How long did it last? Siguro, it didn't last very long because it was cheap. Well, what are some things that are fake today? Ano yung mga fake today? Give me some examples. Things that are fake. I want to hear you. Fake things, fake, fake, fake. You know where they sell all these fake things? Alam niyo, di ba? In the, in the green area. That green area, far I don't know if it's open even today. Huh? Ayun, shoes, sabi ni Faya. Kahel says, Blessed evening, good evening, everyone. Fake news, Jeff says, yes. Lito says, fake news. Ano mga fake, fake? Perfume, Marge says. Yes, Geraldine says, handbag. Tama. Ano mga ibang fake? Medicines, Joseph says, yes. Uh, Serena says, yes, bag. Ayun, Geraldine says, Rolex, fake Rolex. Ang dami mga fake, di ba? As a matter of fact, if you think about it, may fake watches. Yung mga Rolex, mga uh, Tudor, mga, anyway, fake. may fake perfume. May fake uh, hair, di ba? Mga fake hair, wigs, fake teeth, fake nails. Fake body parts, fake meat. Can you imagine? It's supposed to be meat, but it's fake. It's not real meat. Fake cheese. May fake ice cream pa. Fake sugar. Fake designer clothes. Huh? Fake leather. Fake gadgets. And dami mga fake. As a matter of fact, you can talk about fake news to your fake friends on social media with your fake identity. Diba? And damning fake. Yes. Well, let me tell you. The title of tonight's devotion is, Am I a Genuine Christian? Can you answer that for yourself? Am I a Genuine Christian? Oh boy, may fake nose, fake fake eyebrow, fake plants, and dami mga fake, di ba? Fake shirts. Okay. Am I a Genuine Christian? What about fake faith? May fake faith ba? Oh, wow. Listen, what's the difference between fake faith and fake and genuine faith? Fake faith and genuine faith. What's the difference? Well, think about it. I want to hear from you. What the, what's the difference? Fake faith and genuine faith. Can you tell the difference between fake faith and genuine faith? Well, some of you might say fake faith. Cannot save you. Diba? Fake faith is powerless in prayer. Sige pa. Tell me, tell me. What do you think? Fake faith versus genuine faith. What's the difference? Emilia says, not saving faith versus saving faith. Tama. Yes. Ayun. Miriam says, object of faith. Tama. Gerald says, no fruit is fake faith. That's so true. Jeff says, fake faith cannot and will not endure trials. 
beautiful. That's so, so true. Hanggang dito lang eh. Faya says, fake faith is just word, no action. Selena says, genuine faith bears fruit. Sunny says, fake faith does not last long. Oh, I love your your inputs. Leonardo says, fake faith easily quits. You know, give up kagad. Uh, Gary Benassa says, fake faith only hearers but not doers of the word. Evan Arce says, no transformation is fake faith. Beautiful comments, all of you, yes. And, and I agree with all of your comments. Fake faith cannot stop you from committing sin. You will have no conviction to hold you back. Fake faith will not bring forth real fruit. You might have fake fruit, but not real fruit. It will not change your life. You see, when, when life doesn't seem to work, like, like this COVID-19 pandemic, fake faith doesn't work either. Now, there are some areas in life where fake works, but you need the real thing when it comes to life. You need the real thing. You can buy fake stuff, but when it comes to life, you need the real thing. You need real faith. Now, the title of our devotion, Am I a Genuine Christian? That's what I want you to ask yourself as we go through this. Don't think about other people. Ask yourself, am I a genuine Christian? 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. It tells us very clearly, test yourselves. Diba? Subukan yung sarili niyo. Test yourselves. If you are in the faith, examine yourselves. Look at your life. Don't look at others. Judge yourself. Look in the mirror, the spiritual mirror. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves? That Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you fail the test. You see, in the Bible, there are over 6,000 promises that God has made to you. And you need these promises to stay stable, strong, healthy during this pandemic. But you have no access to these promises if you do not have real, legitimate, genuine fake faith. All right? What is real faith capable of doing? What is real faith capable of doing? Real faith is, has power to change your life. It has power to save you. It has no power to answer your prayers if it is fake. But real faith has power to transform you to be more like Christ. Now, I want to focus on the book of James. He wrote this little passage to believers to help them and help us know the difference between real faith and fake faith. Okay? Some of you may be wondering, why are my prayers not being answered? Maybe the problem is not your request, but it might be your faith is fake. In our passage in James chapter 2, if you have your Bibles, look, follow with me, okay? We shall learn the difference between real faith and fake faith. Okay, real faith and fake faith. I see so many comments, huh? Wonderful comments, yes. All right, James chapter 2, verse 14 to 20. Let's read this together. Wherever you are, read it together with me from your home, okay? What is the What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothing, in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. But someone may well say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one? You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. But you are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? Now, okay, reading this passage, you're probably asking yourself the question, Teka muna, I, I learned that faith is by grace through faith, but salvation is by, by grace through faith, but there's no works involved. Do you think that James is contradicting Paul 
who wrote in, in the New Testament about faith and works as well? Are they contradicting each other? Well, James and Paul did not contradict each other. Instead, they complemented each other. What's the difference in their perspective? What's the difference in their perspective? Well, Paul was talking to unbelievers. James was talking to believers. Two different groups. Paul emphasizes how to know we are saved. James emphasizes how to show we are saved. Iba yung knowing and showing. Paul's focus, Paul is focusing on the root, the root of our salvation, which is invisible. It's unseen. It's unseen. But James is focusing on the fruit of our salvation, which is external and visible. So, guys, it's two sides of the same coin. When Paul talks about works, he's talking about keeping the Jewish laws in order to become a believer. That's something that you and I cannot even accomplish. He says, you can't even do that. That won't save you. But when James uses the same term, works, he's talking about our personal works or our good deeds. He's talking about living like Jesus because you are already a believer. Are you with me? Are you with me? Here's the question. What is real faith? What is real faith? Well, James, in this passage, he gives us three things that real faith is not. Three things that real faith is not. And then he gives us two examples of what real faith really is. So let's go through this together. Okay, let's go through this together. As I go through this, I want you to do a self-evaluation because that's how this, this message will really impact your life. Ask yourself, am I a genuine Christian? Don't think about what others think. Don't think about what you think all this time. Ask yourself today, this, am I really a genuine Christian? First and foremost, James chapter 2, verse 14. What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but has no works? Can that faith save him? Now, I want you to circle in your notes, okay? The word saying, what's the use of saying? Circle that. What's the use of saying? What's the use of saying you have faith? If you don't have any actions in your life, here's the first thing. Number one, real faith is more than just words. Say that with me. Real faith is more than just words. What are some words that Christians say that could be meaningless without real faith? There are people who say that they're Christian and they say a lot of Christian lingo. They say, you know, oh, God is never early, but he's never late. You know, his timing is perfect. They sometimes have memorized prayers, okay? Or they say, praise God. God bless you. Thank God. They quote scripture. But you know, there's no evidence of being genuine Christians. They claim to have real faith, but that doesn't prove anything. It doesn't prove anything to say all these things. Knowing all the religious lingo of Christians, all the phrases, does not guarantee that you have real faith. Have you ever met somebody who sounded like a believer? Have you? Yeah. They know all the right phrases, but their lifestyle is a complete opposite. It doesn't match their words. They live completely different from what they say. Like, you know, the people quote, you don't, your walk does not match your talk. Studies have shown that here in the Philippines, many people claim to be Christian. A vast majority of people say, I am Christian, but they sure don't act like it. Well, that's not up to us to judge. God will judge them. But you know, today, we tend to label anybody who's a celebrity, anybody who's a sports star, you know, an actor, a singer, we label them as Christians when they just suddenly say something that's Christian. That doesn't mean that they're Christian. Look at their lifestyle. See the actions, the fruit, okay? James is saying, just because you say you have faith doesn't mean you have real faith. Faith is more than words. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who what? 
does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Whoa. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Only the people who enter heaven are those who do what his Father in heaven wants them to do. Are you today a Christian who is all talk but no action? Talk is cheap. So real faith is more than just words. Real faith is more than just words. Let me read some of your, your comments, huh? Here. Uh, Mel Versosa de la, de la Peña says, Fake faith, no transformation. Genuine transformation fruit. Lori Hieronimo says, Fake faith is always fearful. Genuine faith is always peaceful. Nice. Ryan Peñarubia listening to fake teachings all right uh marcel maliari says fake faith is self-conscious real faith is jesus christ conscious baby candole says fake faith it will lead you to die in hell all right edgar ignacio says good works is the fruit of our salvation it is not the root uh Mel de la Pena says again, genuine Christ-like fake, no growth. Okay, I, I think I understand what you mean. Okay, let's continue. Secondly, James now says in chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? Even so, it has no. It, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. What's James saying here? James is saying you can see a person suffering, and you can feel really bad for them, like kawawa naman sila. I, I, I pity them. I have compassion for them, but if you do nothing, it's useless. In other words, real faith is more than just an emotion. It's more than just a feeling. You can have emotional moments and never have real faith. Now, does this mean you have to help everybody you see who needs help? Well, this is where you need to pray and ask God to give you wisdom. Because there could be a thing such as enabling. Okay, It could be that God is disciplining that person. So what do you do? When you see a person in need, you pray about it. And you ask your spouse. Ask yourself, should we help this person? This is how I feel. And how do you feel? You see, real faith is practical. It gets involved with people's needs. Ask yourself, does God want me to help this person? Because you know what? If God is disciplining that person because that person has been a bad steward of what God has given them, then you need to back off and allow God to teach them that lesson. Because if you come in and rescue that person, you become the Savior and what happened to Jesus? They don't see Jesus as a savior. So be very, very careful. Be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Take action for the right reasons. Okay? James says in verse 18, But someone may well say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith with my works. James is stating that there's some people who like to argue. They like to debate about faith. They look at faith as an intellectual game. It's like a theology to be studied. It's a doctrine to be debated. James is saying, for some, it's just a mental challenge. It's an idea to be discussed. It's a truth to be talked about. You know, in other words, for them, faith is not something you do. There's some people who love to talk, 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 talk all day, all night about God without. And they talk about faith and they'll be happy to debate with you. It's all about conversation, not conduct. They would rather discuss the Bible than do it. They'd rather debate theology than practice it. Friends, real faith, remember, is more than just words. Real faith is more than just an emotion. Thirdly, James says, James says, verse 19 and 20, You believe that God is one, you do well. The demons also believe and shudder that means they they fear they get scared they're afraid 
But are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? James, again, uses a little sarcasm here to make his point. He's saying in these two verses, he says, there, there's a guy who comes and says, I believe in God. I believe in God. Hello. Even the devil believes in God. You see, number three, real faith is more than just believing. It's more than just believing. Do you realize that the devil is not an atheist? No, he's, a, he's smarter than that. Even the devil believes in God, but you're not going to find him in heaven with all the other demons. No, believing is not enough. It's not enough because it is one thing to have head knowledge. It's another thing when that knowledge goes to your heart and becomes love, trust, and obedience for God. The word for believing or saving knowledge is not just mental agreement. It is total commitment. It is total surrender. It is willing to put your life on the line for Jesus. James says, faith is something you do. Faith is active, not passive. Faith is a commitment. Faith is a choice that causes you to obey. Faith is expressed in action. All right? Faith is expressed in action. Now, remember, when you do things for God, what's important is not just the act. Because you can have a lot of money and you can do, do, do by giving to charity, helping here, helping there, doing a lot of things. That's great. But you know what? If the motive of your heart behind the action, behind the act, behind doing all those things. You know, a lot of people, especially the rich, have resources. They can do many things. But God looks at the heart of that individual, and he weighs his motives. Is he doing it just to gain points? Just to pampakita na tao? Just to show off? He weighs his motive. Is he doing it out of love? Is he doing it out of real compassion? Is he doing it out of real faith? So, let me ask you some questions. How is your faith demonstrated today? How do you demonstrate your faith? Show me in your in the comment box. Uh, write, those, write down the answers to these questions. Is your faith all talk or does it result in action? Do you stand firm in the convictions of your faith or do you constantly compromise? You know, this is where you really see if your faith is real or not. So let me read some. Uh, let me read some of your insights. Okay. Uh, Edna Escobedo says, "Real faith causes us to turn away from our sinful way of living and restore us to an intimate relationship with God." Edna, thank you very much. That's very very good. Lourdes says, "Fake faith is dangerous." Absolutely. Lito Lapo says, real faith is living. Yes, it's living. Faya Tola says, true faith produces God-like love and a prayerful life. Really wonderful. Yes. Mel De La Pena says, real faith more than just an emotion. Yes. Ryan Penarubia says, fake Christian says he has faith but no works. Yet, a real Christian has faith and works. You see, you cannot have faith without works. Works come as a result of your faith. You don't do your works to show to 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 have faith. No, works come as a result. Works is a byproduct of faith. All right. Leas Singlan says, "Fake Christians' ideas, words, and action are of their own, not based on God's word." True. Also, yes. Mel says, total surrender to God, more of God, less of us. Andrea says, faith is a commitment you have for God showing your humility, surrendering to God, everything. That's for me, that for me is faith. Stephanie says, a fake faith sees God through the lens of crisis, be it personal, regional, or global. An authentic faith starts and ends with God and sees everything else through the lens of God. Very nice perspective, yes. 
Joseph Choi says, put my faith in application. Edwin Landrito says, faith is a trust and worthy to God. Ana Concha says, faith moves to say, living faith, I'm sorry. Faith moves us to obey God, which transforms to good works. Very good. Oh, great. Margot says this, by trusting God, even in times of trials, being grateful and content. Yes, that's that's a way that you show your faith. Very good. You're already showing how you demonstrate it. True faith and obedience to the word of God. Okay, RVN says. RVN, thank you very much. Alex Avante says, real faith springs concern for the spiritual life of others. Okay. Fred Ignacio says, genuine faith is committing your whole life to God, which is why it becomes steady and firm. Catherine Rostro says, true faith is sharing the love of God to others. Yes, this is a demonstration of your real faith. You will want to share it with others. Ryan Benirubia says, my faith is more genuine because God is always with me. Importantly, putting my faith in him, he works in my life. Okay. Candy Sacco says, it takes a lot of effort and commitment to have genuine faith and to have an intimate relationship with God. It is not easy, but on a day-to-day basis, just keep trusting him. Now I want to go to the next part, okay? Uh, James ends this passage by giving us two clear examples of two individuals who showed what real faith is all about. He first talked about faith, what real faith is not. It's not words. It's not the motion. It's not just believing. Then he says, here's an example. James spoke about two people, Abraham and Rahab. Okay. A man and a woman, wealthy businessmen and a poor prostitute. Both demonstrated real faith for us to see what true, genuine faith looks like. In the case of Abraham... Abraham was asked by God to move his entire family to another land. And God didn't give him details. And yet, Abraham, what did he do? Did he rebel against God? Did he question God? No, no, no. He packed up and he left without seeing or knowing where he was going. Well, I shouldn't waste. Well, I shouldn't Google Maps. He just followed God willingly. And God promised to make him a father of great nations. Look at this, James chapter 2, verse 21 to 23. Was our father Abraham not justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was working with his works. And as a result of the works, faith was perfected. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. I want you to take note of this verse. Because here it tells us, Abraham was declared righteous when? When was he declared righteous? When he believed God. Not when he got up and left Ur and and went to this promised land. No, no. When he believed God, it was credited to him as righteousness. He was made right in God's eyes the minute he believed. Later, when Abraham had to sacrifice his son Isaac, remember? He had a son with, with Sarah named Isaac, and he was told, sacrifice your son. God commanded him to do it. What did what did he do? He went ahead and he, he went to the point of willingly sacrificing his son because he believed that God could raise up his son from the dead. That was Abraham, a man of faith. What about us? When God asks you to give up a relationship, do you try to negotiate with him when you know it's wrong? When God tells you to give up a lifestyle of sin, Do you question him? Do you try to negotiate with him? Do you argue with him? When God asks you to stop doing something in your business that you know is illegal, you know it already, and God convicts you through his word, do you delay, delay, delay until you get into trouble? Abraham believed. You see, friends, it's easy to say, I have faith in God. But do you act on it? Do you trust God and obey? That's where genuine faith is revealed. Today, friends, the question is, am I a genuine Christian? Ask yourself these questions. And then James gives us a second story of another person. Her name is Rahab. Verse 25, it says there, In the same way was Rahab the prostitute 
not justified by works. Also, when she received the messengers and sent them sent them out by another way. You see, Rahab hid the spies. She hid the spies for God's people. She knew that these Romans, the people of Jericho, were about to get these spies, God's people. What did she do? Well, she sacrificed her life, protected them from being captured inside the city of Jericho. She sacrificed her life for God's people. She believed in God. She, in the end, in the end, God put Rahab as part of the genealogy of the bloodline of Jesus. Imagine a prostitute as part of Jesus' ancestor, ancestors. That should encourage all of us, friends. God can take your life and turn it around the moment we put our trust and faith in him. Rahab didn't question the situation or circumstance. She said, I will do what I can to protect God's people. Are you willing to sacrifice your life because of your love for God? Abraham and Rahab both showed their faith by the action of their obedience. Their obedience. That's what you look at in your life today. Are you obeying? It's difficult, yes, but you have a God who can back up his promises. So my question to all of you tonight, and I want to hear your comments, okay? Here's the question. What lesson did you learn today, and how will you apply it in your life? What lesson did you learn today, and how will you apply it in your life? Tell me, what lesson did you learn and how will you apply it in your life? Did you learn anything today? I hope that this is helpful to you. This is an ongoing process. Friends, we're not going to be perfect overnight. It's a process and God is taking you through that process. And he sees things in your life and he says, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to help you change. I'm going to put pressure on you and you're going to see that these are areas in your life that you need to, to adjust. You need to change. Is it, a, is it a habit? Is it a sinful lifestyle? Is it uh, compromise in certain areas? What's happening in your life that, that God is teaching you that you need to change? Let me hear from you. Anyone? I like this. Faye says, yes, pray listen and obey i like that that's a great application for all of us anna conscious says faith needs action yes anna is if god is acting asking you to take action take action angel r says, says don't let worldly worries keep you from taking action in faith edgar says trust and obey for there's no other way edgar Remember that all the time. Trust and obey. These are two things, like, like shoes. You've got to trust and obey. Trust and obey. It's, it's the way of life. Walk in faith. Lulu says, my faith in God becomes stronger. I'm so glad, Lulu. Your faith keeps getting stronger. Bon Cornelia says, to be humble. Yes, be humble. Danny Lim says, faith without action is dead. Great life lesson. Noel Langsangan says, listen and be quick to obey. You know what? I like the word quick. Be quick to obey. You know, the, the longer we delay, ay nako, the longer it is to apply. Diba? Yes. Okay. Uh, Sanik Ayaw says, obedience to God's word is the proof of our real faith in God. Lori Hieronimo says, uh, I learned faith is not just speaking it. You need to do it. You need to apply. Do not be half-hearted. It should be wholehearted, totally wholehearted. And if you look at the people in the in chapter 11 of Hebrews, you'll see a whole list of men and women. They're called the heroes of faith. And if you look at their life, wow, they it is all by faith, all believing, 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 knowing that our Heavenly Father knows so much more than we do. He sees the beginning. He sees the end. And when he tells us to do something, he wants what's good for us in the end. Yes, during this time, it's a lot of sacrifice. But you know what? The end is all worth it. It's all worth it. Margot says, faith is putting in action by trusting and obeying God. Uh, Joseph Choi says, to be like Abraham. 
Yes, Joseph, to be like Abraham. Um, Marnen Torrecampo says persistent prayers. Maurice Mendiola Luis says, from the overflow of God's love, we love others too. Evan Arceo says, continue in obedience to God's word and allow him to make daily changes in my life so that I may glorify his name. Friends, allow God to change your life. Change your life day by day. Marianne says, believe and obey. Yes. Evelyn says, hear, believe, and obey. Uh, Edgel says, walk by faith, not by sight. Ryan says, today I've learned that we should trust God. We must show faith and works to others. Yes. And God sees our hearts. Friends, I've enjoyed this time with you. I pray that God has spoken to your heart. It's been a joy and pleasure to spend this time with you. I pray that you've learned and share, 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 okay? Now, right now, we've got 165,000 people who are watching. Next week, I want each of you, every single one of you, to invite one person, okay? Invite just one person to join you in this Thursday evening, and we will be double the number of people tonight. Is that okay? Will you join me in doing that? Get someone to, on, on Monday, tell them about Thursday, okay? And then remind them, remind three, four people, because you can remind 10 people and maybe only one will show up. So remind as many people as you can and then share this in your in your Facebook page. To all of you who are on YouTube right now, big shout out to you who are there. I'm so glad that you're with us. And if you're watching this on a recorded message, shout out to you as well. Praise God that you're hearing this. Let's all continue to grow as genuine Christians, putting our faith into action, not just through words, not just emotion, not just believing, but real action, obedience, all right? Let me pray for all of us. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord God, for your word today. May we look at our lives and not deceive ourselves, but see if we truly are in the faith. We pray, Lord God, that if there's any area in our life that we are resisting in obedience and trust, you would bring that up to us. So we would be convicted and take steps to change, to act, to obey. I pray for all my brothers and sisters here, whatever they're struggling with, whatever they're refusing to obey, Lord, may this lesson today encourage them to be courageous, to step out and trust in you in complete obedience and sacrifice. Thank you, Father God, for all that you're going to do in their lives. Continue to bless them, bless their families, allow them to be protected always from the virus. And allow us, Lord God, to continue to bring others to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you for all those who are watching for the first time tonight. Commit your life to Jesus and see great and mighty things happen in your life. We pray all of this in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. See you next Thursday. I love you guys. Mwah, mwah. See you. Thank you for joining us today for Thursday. If you're meeting with your D group or want to participate in a discussion group tonight, here are suggested breakout questions. We will pause while you take a screenshot. For those availing a Zoom breakout room for their D group or want to join a discussion group, kindly take note of the Zoom details or take a photo of the QR code on the screen. Zoom rooms will be open till 9.30 p.m. If you haven't signed up for a breakout room, please let us know right there in the comments and we'll be glad to assist. If you're with us for the first time, would like to be prayed over, or in need of counseling, please take note of the link or take a photo of the QR code on screen. Our volunteers would be glad to serve you. Once again, thank you for joining Thursday. We hope to see you again next week right here at 7 p.m. Have a blessed evening.